step by step and side by side how to record a song using GarageBand and Pro Tools. Lesson 2 Getting started with GarageBand and Pro Tools. This lesson will show you how to open up GarageBand and Pro Tools and make the settings that you need to ensure that the program works effectively. It will also show you how to set up the tracks that you need to record your own song. Before we open Pro Tools, make sure that your iLock and the audio interface are connected. Now go ahead and click on Pro Tools to open it up. This is the Quick Start dialog box where we can set the session parameters. Choose Create a Blank Session, choose .wav for the audio file type, choose 24-bit for the bit depth, Choose a sample rate of 44.1 kHz and the I.O. setting should be the last used. Next we need to name the session and choose where we want to save it. I'm going to call it No Escape 2. Next I'm going to show you how to correctly configure Pro Tools with your hardware. What you will need to do is go to the setup option on the menu, choose playback engine and just check that the playback device is your M-Track M-Audio device. You should now set your buffer size to 128 or less. This is to minimize latency. When you're editing and mixing you may wish to change the buffer size to a higher number but you can do this later on. Choose 128 samples and then click on OK. Now we need to talk about understanding the different screens that Pro Tools has. There are two main screens. One is the Mix window and the other is the Edit window. And you can get to these two screens or toggle between them by pressing Command plus Equals on your keyboard. You can also get to it via the Window menu. Another thing that's really important is the Transport bar. If this is not showing, you can view it by going to the window menu and choosing transport and making sure it's checked. Now we're almost ready to create an empty track. To do this, we go to track and new. The track that we're going to create is the piano track, which is being played on a MIDI keyboard. Because we need to make Pro Tools use its own instruments, we're going to choose Instrument Track from the drop-down menu. We're going to make sure that this is in ticks, not samples, and click Create. Now we see that Pro Tools has created a brand new track for us. The first thing that we need to do is rename it. Double-click in the track name and call it Piano. Next, we need to toggle to the Mix window by pressing Command and Equals on your keyboard. Now we need to tell Pro Tools what type of software instrument we want to use for this track. Click under Insert, click on Plugin, go to Instrument and choose Mini Grand. The Mini Grand appears in the window. Next, we need to tell Pro Tools that we're using a MIDI keyboard to input these notes. So we go to the All section at the top of the instrument channel and click on it. Choose Predefined and choose the MIDI keyboard that you want to use. In my case, it's the Axiom 49 USB, all channels. Now that we've made all the settings, it's time to see if the MIDI keyboard actually makes the sound we want. Click the red Record Enable button and play your instrument to hear the sound. <laughs> You may also have noticed that the green signal indicator also moves up and down as the signal is received. Now we're ready to create the second track. The next track we're going to create is a bass track. So we're going to go to Track and New and choose One, Mono, Instrument Track, Ticks, Create. 
In the same way that I did for the other track, I'm going to relabel this. I'm going to call it bass strings because I'm going to use strings as my bass line. And OK. Now we also need to tell Pro Tools which instrument we want to use for this track. So in the same way as we did before, we go into the insert menu, we're going to plug in, we're choosing instrument, but this time we're choosing the expand to instrument. Expand to is actually a set of many instruments and we need to tell Pro Tools which one we want to use. So we go to the preset, choose 16 strings, and for this I'm going to try out octave big strings. Now I need to tell Pro Tools to use my MIDI keyboard to create the sounds. So I go to All, Predefined, Axiom 49, All Channels. To make sure it's all working I need to press the Record Enable button and try out my instrument. Now I'm ready to add my third track, which will be my acoustic guitar. Go Track, New. This is an audio track, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And audio tracks should be in samples, but I'm going to leave it at ticks. I can always change it from ticks to samples later if I need to. Next, just like all the other tracks, I'm going to relabel it. This time, Acoustic Guitar, and OK. Now I'm going to toggle to the edit menu. In lesson 1, we connected our guitar to channel 2 of the interface. Pro Tools labels channel 2 of our interface as front right, and it labels channel 1 as front left. We need to change the setting from front left to front right. We also need to check that the output is set correctly. Choose output and choose main out left and right. Now we are ready to test the instrument, we need to press the record enable button. We also need to turn the guitar volume up a little way. We should also now adjust the gain on the interface. As we do that, we can see the green signal indicator moving up and down. We are now ready to create the last three tracks, which are all vocal tracks. We go to the track menu. We go to New, choose 3 instead of 1, Audio Tracks, Ticks and Create. And then I'm going to label each one. The first one I'm going to label Main Vocal. The second one will be Backing Vocal 1. And the last will be Backing Vocal 2. From lesson 1, you will know that the microphone is connected to channel 1 on the interface. Pro Tools calls this front left. So I'm just going to double check that that's correct and select it if it's not. I'm going to do that for each vocal track as they each use the same microphone. I'm going to then record enable and check the microphone to make sure that it is working. I can see that the green signal indicator is lit up and moving so I know that the microphone is working correctly and that's working on each track. At this point we need to talk a little bit about the level of the signal coming through. What we're aiming for is for the signal to never be red or yellow, to only be green. You can achieve this in two ways. The first is by making sure the gain is correctly set on your interface and secondly when you're using a microphone to ensure that you have good microphone technique, that you don't move your head around too much and that you aim your mouth and your voice near to where the mic has the most pickup, which is slightly different for each different type of mic, so you will need to understand your own microphone. In the case of the guitar, you will need to check the volume on the guitar is correctly set as well as your gain on the interface. Now we have set up all our tracks ready to record our song, and we have tested all our instruments and made sure that they are working properly. So we've done that in Pro Tools, we're now going to do exactly the same in GarageBand. Open up GarageBand. When you open it up for the first time, it usually reloads the last thing that you were working on. Let's not have that. Let's go to File and New, 
And here is where we can set our parameters. I'm going to choose empty project because that will give me a blank canvas, a little bit like Pro Tools. I can also set details with the project. If the project details aren't showing, simply click on the drop down arrow. I can set tempo, key signature, time signature, and I can also check that audio input is set to M track and not system setting or inbuilt microphone. I'm going to change the tempo from 120 to 75. Now GarageBand opens up our project with one track showing, but the rest is blank. Now I'm going to explain what some of the buttons in GarageBand do. This button here is the library button. Clicking on this button will alternately hide and show the library. The library is the collection of instruments that you can use. The next button along is the help button. Anytime you're not sure of something in GarageBand, you can click on this and it will explain what the button does. The next button along is the effects button where you can manipulate various settings on the track itself. And the last button is the edit button where you can see things in greater detail. In the same way as I did with Pro Tools, I'm going to relabel my track by double clicking in the track name. I'm going to label this one Piano. I'm also going to change the instrument sound from Vintage Electric Piano to Steinway Grand Piano. As I change the instrument, the image of the actual instrument itself changes too. Now at this stage, I need to make sure that my MIDI keyboard is connected and turned on. When I turn my MIDI keyboard on, a message pops up to tell me that the number of MIDI inputs has changed. Now I can test my instrument by playing the MIDI keyboard. I can see the green signal indicator moving as my instrument is played, and I can also hear the sound of the instrument itself. Now I'm ready to set up my bass track, which is going to be an instrument track played with the MIDI keyboard. I need to go to track and new track. And then I need to select the type of track that I'm going to create. In this case, it's going to be the software instrument track and create. As I did before, I'm going to double click in the track name and relabel it bass strings. And now I'm going to choose the instrument that I want to create sound. So I'm looking for a string sound under orchestral and strings. And I'm going to try string ensemble first. That's not quite the rich sound that I was after. So I'm going to go back to legacy, which is old garage band sounds. And I'm going to choose the string section from there and choose orchestral strings. Now I'm ready to set up my third track. This one is for the acoustic guitar, so it's an audio track. I have the choice of recording using a microphone or line input or of recording a guitar using GarageBand as an amp. I can easily interchange between these two later if I need to. I'm going to choose to record using a line input as it's an audio track. And I'm going to make sure that my input selection is correct. As you will remember from lesson one, our guitar is connected to input two or the second channel on the interface. So I need to choose this and click create. I also need to make sure that it says my instrument is connected with M-Track, otherwise nothing's going to work. As before, I need to label the track, so I double click in the track name and label it Acoustic Guitar. I need to check the instrument is working by playing the guitar, making sure the volume is up and the gain has been adjusted. <laughs> I'm also looking to see that the green signal indicator is moving along with the sound. 
Now I'm going to set up my vocal tracks. Go to track and new track, choose record using a microphone or line input. And in the input section, I'm going to change from input two to input one. As you'll remember from lesson one, our microphone is connected to input one on the interface. I'll relabel the track, calling it main vocal, and test the track. I know it's working because I can hear the sound and I can see the green signal indicator moving. Now I'm going to set up another vocal track in exactly the same way. And I'm going to relabel this track backing vocal one. Now I'm going to create the third and final vocal track. To create this track, I'm going to use a shortcut. I highlight the track I want to duplicate, press Command D on my keyboard, and then the track is duplicated along with all of its settings. Now I simply rename that backing vocal too. I'm going to go back and check that backing vocal one works, and that backing vocal two works as well. All my tracks are set up now and are all working. Now for saving. File, save as, give my file a file name and then save. Now that you have seen how to open up both Pro Tools and GarageBand and create all your tracks, you will have noticed that there are some major differences between the two software programs. In this table, I have highlighted some of the main differences. Pro Tools has a record enable button, but GarageBand doesn't. That means that Pro Tools will not record unless the record enable button is on. GarageBand, however, will, so long as the track is highlighted. Pro Tools will force you to save your project right at the start, where GarageBand does not. Pro Tools offers you many more options for changing system settings like bit depth and sample size. GarageBand does not do this, which makes the program a little easier to use. However, this limits the flexibility that you have later on. GarageBand shows images of the virtual instruments. This is useful for those who have issues with literacy. Some people may only know the instrument they want from the picture, not the name. GarageBand requires less knowledge to set up tracks. And in fact, the whole process is much more straightforward and quicker than the same process in Pro Tools. Both programs have the visual signal input and indicator. GarageBand is much more visually appealing than Pro Tools and less complicated at the outset. However, Pro Tools offers the user much more flexibility with recording. That is the end of lesson two. In lesson three, I will show you an overview of the whole song completely recorded, and we will begin to record and edit the piano track. <laughs>